Hello, welcome to another episode of Rapture Recap. I'm Jalen Barnes, my lovely wife, Casey. We're happy to have Hello. you here with us another week. Let me know, are you someone who watches us live or do you watch the recordings that we send out of Rapture Go? I'm just curious to know. Let us know. You know, our audience and everything. But we're just so thankful to everyone who continues to participate. We are growing on Rapture Go. Mm -hmm. We have exceeded 60 subscribers to the Rapture Go platform. So we're just growing and growing. And uh, we're still talking about the series of marriage. But we just released a uh, Rapture Go Q and A session. Oh, awesome! Recorded on video, our pastors answering your questions. So if you have not seen this and you want to, you need to sign up for Rapture Go. Text the word Rapture to seven nine seven nine seven nine, and you will get a link right back to that session. That's the only way you can watch the entire thing. We're posting clips on social media, but the only way to watch the entire session is to sign up for Rapture Go. We want to do that exclusively for all of our faithful subscribers, and it's just awesome. It's been, people have been doing it and, and enjoying it, so uh, we just thank you so much uh, for signing up to Rapture Go. And if you haven't, do it. Text Rapture to 7979. Do it. It'll change your life. Join everyone else across the nation. And it's completely free, it. isn't it? Yeah, completely free. It's completely free. Completely free. We're not charging you for it. Uh, so praise God. Today we continue on the philosophy of marriage. It's exciting. I believe this is like the landmark series mm -hmm. of this year. Um, we're, we're on the 12th installment uh, of this. And it doesn't even feel like we've been on it that long. I mean, I, I get it. It doesn't feel like it's been that long. It's really. just been that it's just been flowing. It's, it's such an exciting message that every week we want to hear what's well, next. Well, there's so many aspects and mm -hmm. avenues to marry. Yeah. It's not, it's too broad to try to just broaden the message. You got to yeah. touch each detail because everybody comes from oh, yeah. different lifestyle, uh -huh. backgrounds, and how they enter into marriage. Everybody has a different story, so you have to be able exactly. to touch each individual life like that. And you know, there are so many scriptures on marriage, and we mm -hmm. went to a passage that we, in 12 weeks, we didn't even touch the uh, the, the chapter that we touched today mm -hmm. on marriage, but there's so much that the Word says about marriage, and I think it's what we miss on any topic, whether it's prosperity or healing or anything, but marriage and family included. I think sometimes we miss how much the word actually explicitly says mm -hmm. about the topic and the wisdom of our pastors by the Holy Ghost to be able to break all these things down and show it to us. And it makes so much sense when you're sitting here listening to it or whether you're listening online, mm -hmm. um, the things that you're hearing and the things that you're learning. And it brings so much freedom. Well, too. the word is alive mm -hmm. and the revelation would never end as long as you're seeking yep. and searching for it. God is always speaking and he's concerned about marriage. Because marriage is the foundation for every mm -hmm. success in our lives, whether we know it or not, because it is the foundation for, for family. Yeah. And God, the first relationship, the first human relationship, the first was, human marriage. Relationship was marriage. Yeah. And it has spawned all that we see right now in our human in humanity, uh, spawned from that marriage, whether good, bad, or indifferent. And it was the failure in that first mm -hmm. marriage relationship. Yeah. That threw everything, everything out of order. Out of order. It, it led to the the sibling rivalry between Canaan. Mm -hmm. See, what I love about this series is it explains so much about you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think as human beings we do things we don't even know why. Like, yeah. Why am I angry? Why am I hurt? Why do I have this addiction? Why am I struggling? Why can't I hold down a relationship? Why why am I don't feel loved? Why do I feel ugly? But this but this but this has done whether you're someone who's married or not. It helps reveal what the, the devil has done. Mm -hmm into your mindset and made you feel the way you feel for so long. And so by looking at marriage, we understand why so many things in society is out of order. Mm -hmm. By the failure of that first marriage, we got the first sibling rivalry mm -hmm. in Cain and Abel. And then we've got the first uh, socialist society with Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. Yeah. And then we've got, so you see when you have that breakdown, that first divorce Murder. between Adam and Exactly. <laughs> I mean, everything you can every think Every sin of. came out of that, you know. And so we see that marriage is the foundation that God started mm -hmm. with. But if it's the foundation, it can lead to the success of a kingdom and of a society or it can lead to the failure of it. It just shows just how powerful mm -hmm. marriage is. And doing it God's way is, is doing it doing it God's way is in our um, best interest mm -hmm. because it'll help us stave off a lot of those things that, you know, doing the wrong way will bring into your life. And my personal belief, and I've heard other people say this, but that a society is strong when marriage is respected. Mm -hmm and understood and sanctified. And I'm not saying that people don't commit sins in those societies, that they don't do wrong things, but it's a certain uh, uh, gravity that yeah, everyone walks yeah. around with, the understanding of how marriage is supposed mm -hmm. to be handled. And when it's done wrong, although we don't want to be judgmental people, we still can identify this is incorrect and this is the way that it should be. And so one thing that Dr. Davis always uh, mentions every pretty much every lesson is don't be in condemnation when yeah. you hear something that exposes 
the way you did I it mean, wrong, nobody's right? perfect. Mm-hmm. And since we are still living in this sin mm-hmm. world and we're still striving to be more and more like Jesus, mm-hmm. we're not perfect. We've all made mistakes trying to do relationship yep. right. But it doesn't mean that you don't supposed to know the truth. Yeah. You got to know what you did wrong yeah. in order to correct right. your mistake. Yeah. And the idea of this message is to heal the marriages that's been broken. Mm-hmm but to also give a chance for this next generation yep. to do it right. Because even for us, you know, I feel like we had a better um, starting point than our parents because we had the advantage of knowing the word and truth, but we also still made mistakes. Yep. But I feel like our children yep. will even have a and greater success because it's supposed to make the next generation better and better. And think about how important the next generation is because that's mm-hmm. going to define your society and the culture yeah. you live in. And you may say, well, I don't have children of my own, they're already grown, or I don't plan to get married again. But you still want to know these things because when we got married, it seemed like everybody and their mother was trying to give us advice, yeah. whether it was solicited or not. But as soon as someone finds out you're getting married, or as soon as they find out you're about to have children, everybody wants to give mm-hmm. them all this advice because they've done it before. But, you know, we had good counsel from the word and from our pastors and everything. And so we knew what to sift through and half the information we heard was incorrect. But you know, I thought about it, I've said this to people before, I'm like, you know, half the stuff people told me they were wrong about. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know what they were talking about. And if I listened to them, my marriage would have been destroyed. So you don't want to be one of those people. If you if you interact with somebody, whether they're your children or they're not, but from the next generation who's endeavoring to go into marriage, you want to be one of the people giving the good advice. Exactly. I mean, everyone's giving their opinion. Everyone's giving their advice. At least let yours be lined up with the word of God. So if someone listens to you, may they listen to the word of truth. Amen. You know, So you want to be equipped with the proper knowledge to help somebody else. Amen. You know, if, Especially if you're in a church environment, you may go to another church if you're someone over rapture go. Um, you're going to interact with different people, you know, coming through the congregation and, and, and getting married. And you want to be able to give good advice that lines up with the word of God. You know, you want to be able to teach people the truth about relationships and to let them know. I think some people really are afraid of relationships. They really feel like it's just pain and suffering. Well, I mean, if we look at society, I wouldn't want to be married either. Yeah. Not having mm-hmm. knowledge of how God called us to do it because it's painful to be in a relationship that you commit your mm-hmm. whole life to. Mm-hmm. And we hold so much back. I, I encounter a lot of, God minister to a lot of women, and I encounter a lot of women, and I mean, from all age groups, from teenage up to senior, and a lot of these women are walking around old in age, but hurt and broken because yeah. some man broke their heart because they didn't have boundaries, they didn't understand their worth, mm-hmm. and they didn't allow somebody to abuse them, and vice versa, men have hurts, pains, and they have a view about women because somewhere somebody taught them how to view women the wrong way. They didn't understand the value of women, and they didn't understand the value of themselves either. So what we're learning here in this marriage um, series is we're learning each other's value. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And why it's so important to do it God's way. Mm -hmm. Um, Teaching the men how to value women and teaching the women how to value men and to see each other correctly according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because when you do, it'll it'll make you, um, not questions, that's the wrong word but more careful on how yeah. you enter relationships. Exactly. And you should be. It's so yeah. important. It's too important to just take lightly. Because know? it's not, and because it becomes not just about yourself and mm-hmm. what I need out of a relationship, but I could, if I say I love you, I want to make sure you're getting a good deal too. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm going to make sure that I'm right as well so that I can handle the preciousness that you are. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's just full circle and it's just so awesome. And uh, something that Pastor Dana said to that point was, she said, our goal is to help women bring their value yes. back. And she made a statement of how when these relationships and they go wrong, it's usually women who really get the short end of the deal that wear more scars than the men. The men get scars too, she said, but it's the women that the devil does a double work on. Because to women really are destroy. nurturers. Mm-hmm. And we nurture and we incubate, not only just physically mm-hmm. from a physical wound, but from a spiritual wound. We have one that men don't have, and we nurture things. And that thing could be in us for 20, 30 years, and you can walk around with that hurt that feels just as fresh as the day as it happened yep. because we nurture and we bring life to anything that we allow to yeah. plant in our souls. Exactly, and that stuff doesn't go away. And mm-hmm. Dr. Davis said that it's a dog mentality for men to sleep with many women without considering the aftermath, mm-hmm. both to themselves and to other women, because he also said that he always encourages men who are looking at a relationship with a woman, you know, he encourages them to place a high value on that woman's celibacy right? Exactly. Um, because that's God's daughter. Mm-hmm. At that point in time, that's God's daughter. That's right. And that's not something you want to violate because you put yourself in some serious trouble, mm-hmm. serious danger from God on that woman's behalf to you. 
when you don't, uh, when you violate that celibacy and that, and that covenant she has with God at that point. And we were talking about in this message, the ownership uh, factor in marriage. And it was the first Corinthians seven, um, from the Chronicle in the wrong place. But anyway, first Corinthians seven, uh, it talks about how the man does not have power over his own body. His wife does. The woman does not have power over her own body. The husband does. And so what that does is it, it takes away the factor of that independence mm -hmm. that we try to prop up so high in our society. But you can't walk around with that if you're going to be in a marriage relationship because your spouse owns your body now. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything any kind of well, way. That's, that, that's what becoming one is. Yeah. You know, you can't be one and then yet want to be super independent about mm -hmm. this is my body, I do what I want, you mm -hmm. can't tell me what to do, and then expect your other half yep. to be in agreement with you when they're not and to be okay with it because they, you want them to celebrate your independence. Well, they become an extension of you. Yeah, exactly. And they represent you wherever they go. So everything is, is vitally important about how they handle themselves and what they do. And if you're afraid to be owned by someone, you don't, don't need married. to be in a relationship, don't. in a covenant relationship. See, in our covenant relationship with God, we are his people. We are his children. He owns us. But he also said, I will be your God. Mm -hmm. So we own him too. So there's this ownership that happens in covenant. And Dr. Davis made this powerful thing. He said, in covenant, you know, the you remain faithful. And if you don't, if you violate the covenant, that's punishable by death. So that's very important. That's why the law was you commit adultery. They could stone you out in public. Mm -hmm. That was just a law because that was a representation of covenant that when you violate covenant, that promise, that vow, you know, that's punishable by death because that's treason that you've committed. And we can commit treason against God. We can commit treason against our spouses. And that's why it's until death do us part because that's the only thing that fulfills the covenant that says, okay, it's finished now. Mm -hmm. So it's a serious thing when you get married. Those aren't just words. It's when you not. get married, it's like the only thing that says that we're now released from our vows is when we die. I mean, until then, that's forever then. That's forever. And that's the, that's the whole point. Um, so, yeah, we really talked about ownership and, and what that means. But understanding that before you get married, that makes you value the other person's virginity mm -hmm. and value their celibacy and, and their being owned by Christ because you realize if I am taking the responsibility of saying I want to marry you and I want to take ownership of you, then I've got to abide by you correctly now mm -hmm. while I don't own you. Because uh, as Jesus said himself, you know, if you don't know how to be faithful with another man's, with yeah. another man, yeah. how will you be given much? Yeah. So it's the same process when you're looking to marry someone. I'm specifically talking to men in this next statement about the make, but you don't own that woman yet. Mm -hmm. So you treat her with the utmost respect because she's owned by God. And then when you go to marry her, what you're, you're just saying is, God, I'm taking ownership of her. Not away from God, because God is always involved and I will always be his daughter. But you're taking a responsibility, acting like Christ and being a Lord in your household and saying that I'm taking on this responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's a heavy responsibility. That's nothing to brag about in this way of like you're some kind of big boss. That is a heavy gravity that you've got to walk around with every day that you can't violate. And I think it's a misunderstanding of that kingdom mentality that makes people fornicate before marriage, that mm -hmm. makes them not take marriage seriously, that makes them not, that makes them commit adultery once they are married, because they don't understand these principles. They don't understand how heavy it is. And I think if men understood before they ever looked at a woman to get involved with her, the gravity of what it was they were saying that they were gonna to be to that yeah. woman and how they were gonna represent God to that woman, I'm gonna back off. They'll be too scared and, to get involved. And as a woman, we should the same mm -hmm. um, um, caution that we don't give our bodies to a man without the permission of God. You know, we gotta seek our father. Is this the one you mm -hmm. want for me to be my husband? Am I, am I to submit to them? Mm -hmm. So don't just be all willy-nilly because you're grown or whatever and you over 18, you do what you wanna do in society. But if you claim to be a born again Christian, your body belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And you need to consult God about this man. And do it right, be willing to do it right. Mm -hmm. And also know that that man has gone before God about you and has gone to proper authority, whether mm -hmm. that's your father, your natural father, or if you don't have one that's in your life like that, or to, to your pastor, and got permission for you. Get his blessing. And you know, we do that a lot. People do that, you know, out of formality. Well, I'm going to get her father's blessing. But they don't really understand what they're doing mm -hmm. when they're doing that. A lot of time, they've already slept with each other mm -hmm. and they get engaged. Then they go, well, I'm going to ask your dad. It's all right. Well, you didn't care about that six months ago. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, they don't understand that getting that permission, getting that blessing. Mm -hmm. Because when somebody gives the blessing to you, mm -hmm. that means that they are not they're not giving you just permission, but they're giving you the grace to take care of. Mm -hmm. And empowerment. Empowerment. 
that woman. Yeah. So you get God's blessing, you get his his riches, his his um, provision, everything else goes along with that blessing when you do it God's See, way. See, these concepts that our society does not respect anymore, mm-hmm. we stopped respecting them because we felt like they were old fashioned. Yeah. And it was about, uh, they, they thought it was about control and just formality mm-hmm. and, and power trips and all that. Nah, this was, God set up this order. People can get involved with it and start twisting it and messing yeah. it up. But that don't mean you just ignore the order that God created. You go back and you find from the originality what he did in the garden. I mean, in in the Old Testament and even in some cultures, even today, when a a man will go and and Mm -hmm. ask for a woman, that family will give a diary Mm -hmm. with that woman to that man because that was to ensure the provision of Mm -hmm. that woman Mm -hmm. as she entered into marriage. So do it right because Mm -hmm. you want that blessing. You want God's diary for that woman to mm-hmm. to come along with you in that relationship by doing the right because, way. Because I think men have to understand, especially in society, it's just like, well, everybody just do what you want to do. And look, you do what you want to do in your household. Look, can't control that. And we'll stop that. But what you fail to understand is when you take that leadership role and that covering role, there's an aspect of provision that comes mm-hmm. with that. And you want the anointing of God for provision yes. on your life before you take that woman with you because you're taking that head role that you, you look at how God did it how God provided, how he loves his children, how he loves, uh, how he loved Israel. Because he, he always used a lot of marriage language. He was talking about Israel. Wherever they uh, leave from here, we would call it adultery and prostitution and all that. So you got to look at how God provided for his family, his people. So when you take a woman and make her your family, you want to be able to do the same things that God did. And you need his anointing, his grace, and his favor to do it. I'm not talking about toil. And, and, and trying to work 20 jobs to make ends meet. I'm talking about the blessing. Like you said, you want that blessing mm-hmm. on that relationship. So what this lesson is teaching is just the gravity of marriage and that it's not just loosey-goosey, do whatever you want to do. It's just a thing, you know? It's just, it's just everyone has their own idea, everyone find their own way. That's why we have a 50%, if not higher, divorce rate. And now we're learning is that in our generation, going into the millennial class, marriage is happening less or later. Mm-hmm. Now we're just not getting married at all. And that's, I won't say it's worse, but it's, it's, it's just as bad. It's just as bad. Because once again, marriage was God's idea and it was a powerful thing. There's so much power, just energy, just just prosperity and blessing in marriage. Just a powerful couple We just know from our own experience that since we've been married, mm-hmm. our lives have taken off in a way that yeah. it didn't while being single. Mm-hmm. And not that being single was a bad thing mm-hmm. or we didn't have a good single life. It's just that... The union of marriage, it just amped up whatever God had put in us. God already. doesn't create anything that doesn't have blessing. And we're not trying to say, like, oh, if you want to be single, that's something bad. Because no, a lot of people, lot of people are really insecure about that. Like, they want to be single. That's fine. Be single. We're not telling you don't be single. But God did create marriage. And when he creates anything, it's always about going to another level. It's always about abundance. So there is an abundance mentality and abundance aspect to marriage that was not there when we were single. And that's just the way that it is. I'm sorry. I'm not saying you can't be single. And I'm saying that, that that's not what you want to do or that God hasn't called you to it. But if someone wants to get married, you're, you're asking for a great thing. But understand what you're doing. And like Paul said uh, in the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 7, he said, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Mm-hmm. So look, let's start off by saying, You'd be better off Keep on your own than stuff. doing it wrong. <laughs> you know, you'd be better off on your own than to do it wrong. If you're going to do it wrong, then you still do it. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to do it, do it right because there is great blessing in this. It is an awesome thing. And we're learning how to do it right. And if you've done it wrong, thank you, Jesus, for the blood of Jesus that washed you from your sins. God, don't remember it. And you can still do this right. Absolutely. And you can teach someone else how to do it right. Amen. So we encourage you to listen to this message we heard today. You'll be, it'll be available Tuesday um, through Rapture Go. Text Rapture is 7979. 79, you can listen to this message. Uh, if you're someone who wants to uh, support financially this ministry, like many other people are doing uh, across the nation, then you can do the same. Go to our website. There's a uh, give button that you can give securely through PayPal. But please do sign up for Rapture Go. It's completely free. Text Rapture to 797979. You'll be subscribed to getting all these Rapture recaps every week, all of our sermons, all of our devotionals, um, and every special thing. We have more and more coming. We have so many ideas we're working on yes. a weekly basis, and we're excited for you to be a part of it. So don't miss out. Subscribe to Rapture Go. We love you. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you on Sunday.